There's this brain training facility that helps you rewire your brain, increase IQ, boost creativity, grow a huge mustache. It doesn't really say that, but it doesn't say it doesn't. Their usual clientele is billionaires, CEOs, top celebrities, and now myself. But on a serious note, I've always hated the idea of being average, just being like everyone else. But what if you could become exceptional, gifted, different? My friend Raf and I signed up for the five day intensive training. And if we had known what we got ourselves into, we wouldn't have signed up for this. Hello? Whoa, you feel the energy in here, man. It is like still. What does this training look like? You're gonna go into this chamber. It's gonna be soundproof, lightproof, and you have electrodes on your head, 14 hour days, inside the chamber and debriefing, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. What happens to the brain is the equivalent of if you meditate for 40 years. 11.7 increase in IQ is the average. So the crazy thing about IQ is like three to four points. It's gonna make a massive difference in how you view the world. So we also took an IQ test before and after to see how much it increased. What did I miss? Hello. Hey, you are, I'm Brian. Leon, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Leon. Raph, nice to meet you. Raph. This handsome fella is Brian, our main instructor for the next five days. What is this? This is our chambers. Oh, yeah, this looks like a torture chamber. In this dark, freezing room, our brains are going to be hooked up to a neurofeedback device. The goal of this training is to learn how to get into a high alpha brainwave state at will, which is a state in which you are relaxed, highly creative, and no problem can't be solved. Our brain's alpha waves will be measured and converted into sound in real time. The higher the waves, the louder the sounds. So we can hear whether we're doing it right. And every two minutes, we see scores of our alpha waves. You'll go as deep as you allow yourself to go. And with that, we'll begin the journey. And your first enhancement today, when you're enhancing alpha, have fun. Get used to the tones, get used to your brain. Good luck. I wish you the best. Yeah. You know, it's in these moments you ask yourself, what have I gotten myself into? You gotta come back, right? You gonna get me out? The way I see this is that we are getting a human upgrade. It's like in Captain America where he goes into the chamber and he comes out different human. We're gonna be different people. Remember, you are in control of the tones. We're just measuring the brain waves. His amplitudes, you can see, are starting to shoot up. They've been in there for about 90 minutes now. It's crazy. So listening to tones, I feel like their brain's gonna be fried by the time they come out. This is wild. You just try out different things to get your brain to respond, and then you get the feedback and you're like, oh, I think I did it right. I had a completely different experience. Yeah, I found it so difficult. What yeah. was the thing that helped you? I don't know if I wanna share my secrets. I mean, you don't wanna <laughs> share your secrets up. <laughs> Yeah, let's talk to him. Yeah. Let's see what he says. This is canopy room. So after your session is over, you come in here, and talk about your experience. How was it to hear your brain for the first time? Um, it was a little overwhelming or confusing at first. I was like, okay, let's feel good or think about the goals that I want to work on or didn't work. Do you think his brain waves are average, below average? I mean, Ah, surely not above <laughs> average. At the end of the day, it's not a comparison. But, exactly but, what yeah. I'm always saying, Raph. But if you were to compare. Yeah. Next up, we are doing a bunch of forgiving. Five instances, people, things that we want to forgive. I thought we were here to increase our IQ. <laughs> <laughs> but supposedly, this increases your alpha brain waves a lot. We're gonna go over the BioCybernaut Forgiveness Protocol. This is something that'll be done in the chamber. As you release emotional tension through forgiveness process, it frees up your alpha. Could it be something you've done or something Question. someone did to you? Yeah. Okay. You wanna feel the pain. As we keep going, you'll trigger a lot of things and a lot more things will come up. Good luck. Let's do it. Another session. We're about to begin with our second set of alpha enhancement. This is where you work on forgiveness. All right, Leon, let's hear about what you did. Forgiveness? Yep. Who was the first charge? Uh, my dad. Your dad. All right, and what was the charge? His negative nature. All we seeing was wrong. Mm -hmm. Critical eye. Yeah, critical. The first charge I had was judging my mom or for you know being like a victim and stuff and withholding love for that reason. And you decide to forgive? Yeah, that was hard. It took me a while. As we go into the moods tomorrow, then we'll dig into deeper, deeper stuff.
In the chamber, we had also gone through hundreds of questions about our emotions each time we went in, and based on an algorithm, it revealed what emotions we were suppressing. Stubborn was a big one. Tell me about stubborn. It's connected to impatience. Mm -hmm. I optimize so much for, for productivity that I'm like, mm -hmm. no, we're not doing that. What about miserable? Came up three times. Well, yeah, I guess it comes from being dissatisfied mm -hmm. with my progress, with myself. There's always that feeling that, yeah, could have done more. And that's always what I felt from my dad. Oh, you did this? Good. But you're doing some of this stuff, so you feel like you're enough? If I don't do these things, what, what do I have to offer them? So what things do you need to forgive your dad for? I want to ask Dr. Hart this too, but how does all this increase your IQ? That's a question I ask him. Let's say that you go in to take a test and you've just found out that your girlfriend has left you, your dog at home has been run over, and your mother's had a stroke. How well are you going to do on that test? Now these are obvious things, but everybody holds on to grudges. And so when you clear out the emotional pain, then you can think better. I don't know if you want to get into it now. You know, your experience in high school as well, that you didn't, didn't really tell anyone about, you said. Yeah, just like... I mean, they're just kids, you know, but getting bullied for a few years, not telling anyone in the family about it. Yeah, maybe some forgiving to be done there, okay. just letting it go. But was also, it one bully or multiple bullies? It was like a group of six. Okay, so you want to forgive each one of them. Mm. I mean, but they're just kids, you know what I mean? Like, well, that's logically, I understand. Now, but yeah. blowing it off as though they were just kids, whatever, mm -hmm. there's still a part of you that experienced that. There's still that part of you that in a future situation may take over and cause you to feel anxiety, fear, worry. Mm -hmm. Until you do forgiveness on that, mm -hmm. you know, it could pop up at any time when you're unexpected. It's funny how this is all about trauma in your past and daddy issues. I'm like, where's the IQ stuff? I'm getting more familiar with this room now. It's a different world that you're entering. Imagine you're going into your brain. It's completely dark here and you just hear your brain singing and you see emotions coming up and... This is the room where I do the work. In a way, it's like forced progress. Let's get this show on the road. And I did a forgiveness uh, on um, myself for letting myself be overweight when I was in high school. Got bullied because of that. You know, like all this, this silly stuff. The first one was your dad, and what was the judge? It's just multiple ones. Um, never being satisfied, judging other people harshly, and cutting them off which then created a fear in me to tell him how I really feel because I didn't want to become one of his enemies. Yeah, it was really rough yesterday. That last session, I was so close to bailing. If I knew that this program was about raising your consciousness and spirituality and forgiveness, I don't know if I would have signed up for this. I feel the exact same way. The crazy thing is like all the benefits that we spoke about for this thing, that's a byproduct of doing the forgiveness work. Just wish it wasn't so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're still gonna see how much our IQ increased once we do the final test. How'd you sleep? Not bad, not bad. Yeah. Catch up on your rest a little bit. Yeah, nice. Good better. for you guys, good yeah. for you guys. How'd you sleep? Yeah. Um, I had a really weird dream last night. I was feeling really tired and I was worried that I was gonna get sick, like I needed some immune support. So I went into the kitchen and there I saw it. The sponsor of this video. Can you hold that? A bit higher, like more like this. Just one simple scoop a day, mix it up, and drink it. Drink it! Since my 30-day carnival experiment, I stopped eating liver because it tastes horrible. So to cover all my nutritional needs, I've been drinking AG1 by Athletic Greens. AG1! Actually, let me just do it. It's, it's okay. Okay. If you use the link below, you get five free travel packs with your first purchase. Travel packs! Okay. Uh, a yearly supply of vitamin D free K2. And like most items you order online, it comes in a box. Which you could also use for stuff if you wanted to, I guess. Like a recycling hobby. Recycling. Click the link below and take your health to the next level. Yeah, and that's when I woke up. Anyways, what's next? Typically, you know, we see around day three, they hit a wall of resistance. I think you told me the story once where your dad would let your sisters win, but he would beat you. He wouldn't let me win because otherwise I wouldn't learn how to get better. So do you feel like you're holding back when it comes to winning? Yeah, oh yeah. It sounds ridiculous saying it out loud, you know? It sounds so silly, but like, yeah. I'll play chess with my wife's dad, right? Yeah. And if I'm winning too much, I feel bad because like a respect thing. I'm like, yeah. okay, then I'll, okay. I'll pull back, then I'll lose the game. Yeah. 
It's so mentally taxing, man. My brain is like genuinely a headache right now. Oh, I was struggling by the end. I just wanted to get out of there. So what's the biggest gap right now for you? Oh, I can make a guess. Try to dig, because I was like, you, you said you wanted to go deep, so. Yeah, I think just the whole thing of being hot on myself. Mm -hmm. What's the underlying condition? I look at what's wrong, yeah. what needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, yeah, I think it comes from my dad. Yeah. What he did to me, I'm doing to myself now. Mm -hmm. I need to forgive my dad and myself. Good, that's great. There's no accident that you both are doing the training together. And it comes down to enoughness of not feeling enough. And so really digging down to find where you set up this pattern of not being enough. Yeah. Raf and I were saying before this that all the stuff that we do, productivity, working on our business, going after our goals, all of that comes after this meta belief that we have, which is, yeah, we're kind of not good the way we are right now and we're gonna be happy later. This is like the foundation, the soil that everything grows out of. If we are to change that, that changes everything that we do, everything that we believe, like our entire reality changes. I want to make that transformation yeah. because I don't want to be another guy who posts videos on YouTube and then reinforces this, oh, we got to get somewhere, guys. I have a responsibility here. I think if you get rid of that, the need to be productive, it would change your entire life. The last day is the day that people break through because we'll be looking at the emotions we resist the most. What is the breakthrough you think you're going to have today? I don't know. I feel a bit heavy this morning. Do you think uh, you're done with the what happened in high school? Yeah, for now. One of the things you mentioned yesterday as well was that you are afraid of like something happening in public. I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, that's that, that's a that's far more personal. It's like just being attacked in public, bro. Let's say you put a YouTube video out, you know, the negative comments. That's like in a public arena, getting attacked and things like that. Yeah, so okay. it ties into just like being liked, caring what people think. You know, making sure everybody's good, good and chill. Mm -hmm. Huh. Mm -hmm. Good morning. You excited? I'm pumped. I want there to be like a transformation. I can feel like I'm on the cusp of it, yeah. but I don't want this to be like a blip in an experience in my life. And the only way I can do that is to really get that breakthrough. I think that's completely possible. Be careful what you wish for. Anytime you're facing resistance, you have power. There's, there's... How so? Well, it shows you where the gap is. The first thing that popped up for me is I can't be average. What's the underlying condition? What aren't you? Enough. Not enough. Like the whole word enough doesn't resonate with me. I don't mm -hmm. want to be enough. What do you want to be? Exceptional maybe? <laughs> yes, exceptional. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because enough is like, yeah, he's enough. It's like, yeah. oh. Yeah. I don't know where, where this would possibly come from though. Yeah. Maybe it's because you want to achieve these things so that you don't end up alone. Uh, I feel like the more I go after these things, the, the more lonely it gets. I mean, I lost most of my friends when I started my business and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's almost like being contrarian mm -hmm. on purpose. Yeah. Because I want to be yeah. different than other people. Because I don't belong to them. Yeah. If you want to be different and you don't belong to people, how can you be interested in, in them as a person? How can you expect yourself to help the masses if you can't relate to them? Yeah. I want the connection. I want to relate to people. I want to feel like I fit in, but I feel like I can't. So I go the opposite route. Yeah, when I was... 14, 15, I hated everything mainstream. I just felt like I couldn't be one of the good guys, so I had to be the villain. I wanted to be the villain. Not the villain that's evil, but the villain that's just misunderstood. And that's why when I watch movies, if there's a villain that has a good motive, I always feel for him. Like Silco in Arcane. That guy, he just wants the best for his people. He just doesn't have the right strategies to, to get there. Yeah. I can always find differences between people. That's a never-ending game to play where I'll, I'll always be different and I'll always be alone. I think I found some shit there, yeah. And so that's all it is, is past decisions, thoughts, and emotions you've had are basically causing you to resist something that's in your environment now. I think we talked about on the way here. I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, that's, that, that's a, that's... I think when it comes to the bully stuff, mm -hmm. there's resistance there. Yeah. Part of the reason I don't want to talk about it on this video or I mentioned that maybe I don't want to talk about it is because I don't want to be seen as a victim. I've got like a real resistance to being a victim. I don't want to need help. When he said it, you could feel him like, mm -hmm. uh, what if you are helpless? What if you are a victim? Like, like yeah. <laughs> See your reaction to him? Yeah. It's like, yeah. your reaction is like, 
uh, I just don't like that mentality. It's like being a victim is a choice. Like you yeah. get to choose to be a victim or a victor. And it's like yeah. if I tell myself I'm a victim, then I'm helpless. And if I'm helpless and I need help and I don't want to need help, I can just do shit myself. Yeah. Just like resonating with victimhood, like that. It's not about resonating with victimhood. It's not about being a victim. It's about accepting that at times you've been a victim, whether you like it or not. That's what you're resisting because if you weren't, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Put your arms out and stiff arm, right? Like stiff arm, right? Yeah. So if I'm all these things of your resistance, yeah. who's in control right now? The resistance. But when you release and I'm still pushing and you're not focused on those things, who's in control? Me. All the time. I'm literally not moving. Exactly. All the time that we're resistance, we're stiff arm. One of these breaths again, yeah. 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 You can feel it's. Yeah, I get it, man. It's it. I, it's the same thing for me. It's just mm. other things. Yeah. Oh, it's so frustrating because it's like no shadow to hide in. This all comes down to courage, really. Because if not now, when? This is the hour. This is like the the final hour to really do this. And the question is, do you want to be free? I don't even know what that looks like. Exactly. I mean, think about all the great gifts and lessons. That came from this, you not wanting to be a victim. Mm -hmm. I think that's what made you so ambitious and, and mm -hmm. it made you focus on the strength in other people mm -hmm. and give them hope. Mm -hmm. Like it's one of your greatest qualities, man. Thanks. I mean like, Leon hit the nail on the head. It's like, that's I want to give people hope. Yeah. Yeah. Just, they're so sad. Yeah. They're healthy. But all their shit. feel worthy you could do so much so I can't see myself as a victim because it's like then who's gonna be their rock who's gonna be their strength yeah. you know who's gonna show them that, hey look at all this stuff that you've done look how far you've gotten yeah I believe you because I do I really feel it. it's not just worth yeah. yeah that's what I see the most in Raf yeah. you just see that he's always there to cheer you up yeah. he's always like hey you can do this yeah. you know Cause you can. Yeah. You can do it. Yeah. yeah, that's your greatest quality, man. I love you, bro. Love you. Yeah. I'm curious uh, mm. how you're going to look after today mm. and how your brain is going to look, too. Yeah. How you're going to feel. Mm. Last training. This whole thing really makes you think, who do you have to forgive? Or what are you trying to avoid that you just won't accept? Okay, gentlemen, this is your last chamber session. I was a victim at one point in my life. That's okay. And when other people feel like a victim, that's okay. I can help more people coming to the Situation Hall. And the more I win, the more other people win. Just knowing that I can connect with anyone. I have more in common with everyone than having differences. Why are we even here for the IQ thing? Why are we even here for I the brain know. thing? You know, it's like, I came here for this, and now seeing all this other stuff that we've worked on, this is way more important. This doesn't matter anymore. Exactly, it's like, that was like such a small game, and this is like, this is foundational sh They tricked us into this. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm glad that we got tricked. But, we're still gonna see. Yes. If our IQ increased. I will do it, we'll do it, why not? Yeah. But like, this time I just don't go. Like, I just don't care. Yo. Your head's looking pretty big, bro. Is that the big brain you're holding in there? What's been your experience since? I've just been like ridiculously more productive. The biggest thing that's changed for me is how I relate to people. I've been able to connect with people so much better and the lens through which I view the world has changed. What's the IQ? It increased fairly significantly. 23 IQ points. What? No. Yeah, yeah actually. 23? For context, we had more confidence doing it the second time. It's hard to know what was because of the training or what was because we got used to what an IQ test looks like. For me, there was a six point increase. But at this point, who the f cares? 